What do you consider influence? Is it what we learn from our parents when we grow up? Is it what our friends peer pressure us into doing? Is it political? Or is it the amount of followers you have? No, 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 that that can't be it. Whether you like it or not, you're influenced by everything around you. But it's not what influences you, it's what you do with it. In this series, I ask people from all walks of life what influence means to them. Influence. You want to influence the influence. Whether or not you want to influence the world, but how? Yeah. How do you want to be remembered? What's going on, guys? My name is Esfandi Arberhi, and I have a very, very, very special guest for you. I'm going to introduce him in a quick sec, but... He has created a hockey website at the age of 14, TV show. He made his own app. I know I'm talking you up right now, but he made his own app. He's actually traveled all around the world covering hockey. Mr. Steven Nels. Ellis. Nice to meet you. How you doing, man? Good. Good. All right. Um, you've, you've pretty much done it all when it comes to hockey, right? Commentator, editor, writer. Um, is there anyone that you prefer? Uh, you know what? I've uh, One of the things I've always liked to do is, like, kind of be on air doing TV or radio. I really yeah. love doing TV for a few years. I do a lot of radio stuff as it is now. Cool. Um, I, I think that's, uh, you can, I think you can explain things better than when you're writing it. When you're writing it, you're, a lot of the times you're trying to not say the same thing over and over again. You're trying to make it visual, but that's not exactly easy to do. And, and I kind of like doing things on TV. I like uh, bringing in extra guests. And when I had a TV show for a couple of years, I'm doing stuff for the Toronto Maple Leafs, like, and the visual side of things made a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, and of course. like, you know what, that's, it's hard to get into those, those mediums. But when you, when I became a journalist, I always wanted to be like Bob McKenzie and seeing what he does, but he also does a lot of writing, yeah. but he does a lot of stuff on TV too. And the fact that he, like guys like that that's always been something that I've looked up to and I've always liked the TV side but I also used to listen to uh, I used to get grounded a lot when yeah. I was a kid and my only way of listening to sports news was, learning radio? Was, was radio <laughs> so I got really used to that and just thought it was really cool and yeah. I also love music so something like throwing that in too would be really cool course, so yeah. it's kind of those stuff I like the most I love writing I like kind of getting things across and maybe publishing stuff and people using it down the road as information yeah. but I had TV and radio are two things I kind of like the most okay fair enough We've we've kind of talked about it with Bradshaw earlier, but um, you, you know a lot of obscure information yeah. when it comes to hockey. What is probably the number one most obscure <laughs> piece of information when it comes to hockey? That's tough, and I, I yeah. want to say maybe the one that I honestly completely forgot about until just recently was that Tajikistan has played hockey, and that's a like Tajikistan of all places. I, yeah. I honestly can't say I even heard of the place before. Yeah, uh, they played hockey at a resort. It was just two very small teams, and <laughs> um, kind of my thing is if the country exists, they probably have a hockey team, and that's as weird as it sounds. Like wow. you know, I was talking to someone recently who said it seems so weird that New Zealand had a hockey team. Well, New Zealand's been playing hockey for a long time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, another fact that I love is that um, if you've ever seen the, the Mighty Ducks 2 movie, yeah. Iceland is one of the biggest hockey teams. Yeah. They actually had not played hockey at that point when really? that movie came out. So uh, did that start them? That started okay. for them. So who thought that would have happened? But like, uh, there's Turks and Keiko there. They actually have never played hockey. But like yeah. things like, like in Iceland using that as a way of kind of wanting to play hockey and how much that movie series in general has influenced people and to start programs in smaller countries. Like I've heard of that in countries you again you wouldn't expect to have played hockey like yeah. tunisia and morocco that a movie like that actually had a big influence on them so like that's, that's very cool that's kind of because cool. it reaches a, a bigger audience than some of these yeah like like a movie like slap shot that's more for the diehard hockey fans or yeah. even like more recently miracle like i love that movie but again that's more for the, the diehard fans but okay. a movie like the mighty ducks was kind of like a like a silly it's fun it's for everyone and like that's a good way of kind of getting interested in the sport because yeah that's a fun look at the sport minus the fact that they have a like a, a convicted drunk driver as a hockey coach fair enough in a yeah. kid's movie otherwise <laughs> i think it was actually a really good idea for a movie series and i think that really spawned a lot of teams and kids to want to play hockey cool you you kind of mentioned it with television you've had your own tv show as well with rogers tv um and i believe you you had a partnership with fox as well uh yeah we did that for the the, the hockey house website we we had a partnership with fox i also did a our original show was on kojiko and then we ported cool. it over to rogers and a segment of it was on uh, leafs tv okay 
how was that experience and in, in, in what you want to do on air? Uh, fantastic. You know, like I, I never honestly, when we, we pitched the idea of the TV show, I had no experience of it. I, I had a, a podcast that I was doing when I was, I want to say 13 years old. And like, that was fun. I like doing the performance side of things. And for TV, it's like, it's a totally different animal. It's, yeah. it's, you, you, you can be made look, you can look stupid very easily. <laughs> and we, the, with Brendan Saunders, my co-host, we kind of had a, a dynamic that we kind of call like the, like, I don't know, Coach's Corner. The okay, fact cool. he was more yeah. the Don Cherry, the loud, he's got some jokes, he knows his junior prospects, and I'm more the Ron McLean guy that just kind of brings Settles it all together it yeah. and just doesn't make it into a total, let's just laugh the whole time. Which, yeah, again, yeah. We, we the one thing that was really fun with that was that we weren't totally serious the whole time. And we made jokes, and we tried to make junior hockey and international hockey fun cool. and not just uh, a thing that people scout or things like that or people watch in their free time. It's like, let's make something fun about it. And we were... Like for a, a Burlington-based show, for example, on Kojiko, for us to then talk about hockey in Egypt, that's yeah. a total like what what's going yeah, on. Yeah, it, it's out of left field. Yeah, yeah. and we, we our idea was we wanted to kind of expose this, these levels of hockey to people who again would never have known it. Maybe yeah. only they've seen their their local junior A team or the Maple Leafs, and we wanted to do something kind of much bigger than that. And that's yeah. I think that was a lot of fun. And you know, Leafs TV was great because we got a much bigger audience, and we we didn't just talk about junior players anymore. We talked about NHL and. You know, that's, that was a great experience. That yeah. was fun working with some great people, some people that you see at the rinks on TV, like all of a sudden now you're working with them. Yeah. That was very cool. So TV again was one it's of my It's kind of a surreal experience, right? A hundred percent. So like, yeah. you know, it's, it's funny cause I grew up as a Habs fan. So then going to doing stuff with the Leafs was like a fun thing yeah. because it's yeah. like, oh, well, uh, I'm again, I, I'm, I look at the other side of it. I, I get to look at the other side of it, but then also again, it made me appreciate how, like how much history is with the team. And it's not just like, oh, they're a big rival. Yeah. So. For a long time, when I growing up as a kid, I used to think, "Oh, the Leafs are the biggest." I I, I don't like that team. They're they're the biggest rivals. Yeah. And now it's like you know, it's like we're looking at the team today, seeing how good they're playing and course, how yeah. they got a lot of potential. Um, it, it's cool, like thinking about the history of the team and the people involved, and it's a fantastically run organization. Do you think that with with your show and how you brought up different countries that you wouldn't even expect to play hockey, right? What are some of the more interesting places that you've talk to teams that you've talked to that that kind of strike a nerve with you in a way yeah like I've uh, you know I've never been one for history yeah. and I never did well in geography but I've kind of used Fair international enough. hockey as a way of learning where some of these <laughs> countries are guiding yourself a little I, I can honestly say I'd never heard of a country like Turkmenistan before yeah. I heard about their hockey team it kind of things like that and that's what's a cool way of kind of being um like being absorbed in that culture and seeing like the, the players that really care they're not doing this for money they know that anything to do they're going to be losing a ton of money even organizing this yeah. having a rink alone is very expensive and, and to kind of be a part of that and seeing these countries grow is very cool um the one that i always liked was nepal uh they tried to start a hockey program it's wow, so really? far it hasn't happened yeah uh very cool place so you yeah. think uh the one that really kind of first blew me away was team india Okay. And now looking at it, they they play consistently, so it's kind of like not as strange. But they actually went bankrupt, right? Not not necessarily bankrupt. It's more like it, it was it was tough. They never really had a lot of funding, okay. And it was really tough for them to continue playing. They came and played in Brampton um, a couple years ago against the Brampton Beast, the ECHL team, and uh, I thought that was a great event. But I think they could have they wanted a bit more out of the support. Yeah. And that's tough for a team to kind of move from India to course, Canada for yeah, a week yeah. to go and play there. Uh, but like. Again, Egypt, one of the coolest places because there's a photo that's gone around with uh, uh, a goalie who's based in Toronto who traveled there in his full goalie equipment in front of the pyramids. Like that's something that's again, amazing. That is very cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, Tajikistan, uh, Kyrgyzstan's played. Uzbekistan's yeah. played. Uh, Pakistan is currently working on something. We cool. had there's a, a Toronto uh, businessman that's actually working on building that. So, kind of like countries like that are really fun. Um, Lebanon's a team that's starting to really pick it up. Haiti's yeah. played with uh, former NHLer George Larocque. So cool. Uh, it's you wouldn't you wouldn't expect these teams to have yeah a, a, a hockey team even at rank, right? But what's what's the importance of that? Like how why is that so important to the game itself? You it's really important because hockey is becoming a very global game because mm -hmm. for for the longest time Canada then everyone sees oh, them yeah. as the best yeah. and even when they weren't winning at the Olympics they still had all the stars yeah, yeah. that when the NHL started going to the Olympics, it started to show. For sure. Yeah. And we've seen Canada, USA, Sweden, Russia, Finland always be the best. But the one thing I always say is, 
look at the Arizona Coyotes. They're in a, a desert, and they've had some poor fan support at times. It's starting to really grow big time, a lot with the uh, Arizona State University being there. Yeah. And there's now a lot of kids that are playing there. Same with Vegas. But I, I say if hockey can work in – the desert in, 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 yeah, in Saudi Arabia yeah. it could work in Morocco it could definitely work in Arizona yeah and so when you see something like like these countries play like it's important because it, it, hockey is becoming a very global game you look at soccer obviously pretty much every country can be involved For sure. and hockey is a very expensive sport compared to even like basketball or something yeah. like that but you're getting players that want to play that even if they don't have ice at all in their country again australia and new zealand seem like weird places for hockey yeah but i mean the the most obscure place is kind of i would think the the african countries that yeah. can do it as well right the nigeria is the the kenya is the ghana yeah so right? so like kenya they recently did a whole segment where they came here and tim Hortons helped pay for it and I, i've been talking a bit to some of the members of their team and that was the greatest moment of their lives they thought that was so cool getting to meet a guy like Cindy cross because watching hockey in kenya is pretty tough yeah and i can imagine yeah, yeah exactly and but they've been playing for a long time they rent out ice they and they love it it's yeah. what they want to do. And uh, even though there are a lot of countries, a lot of African countries, for example, that are based in Canada, Montreal specifically, there are teams that are really working on building at home. Yeah. And that's where that's where the most important development is. Because as soon as you get the kids interested, that's when you start to get a lot of people interested in. Okay. You, you can't just have the adults being the only ones playing. You need to have young kids playing. And that's what we're seeing a lot growing. Uh, we're seeing that grow in uh, Asia specifically. is actually the fastest growing continent in the world for hockey. And with, uh, of course, South Korea played at the most recent Olympics. How about the how about the South Americas like Central America South America? Uh, it, there there's still a lot of work going on there. Yeah. Um, we've seen uh, the Pan Am Games kind of uh, evolve over the last few years. We've seen um, like teams like Chile, Venezuela make their debuts. Um, Argentina has yeah. been playing a lot too. Colombia and uh, it, but it is growing. Colombia is again another very fast program that's growing. They have a NCAA Division three player who's played in the ECHL on their team, and they've won a couple of championships now in the last couple of years. And it's you know like a lot of those teams have support for North Americans, yeah. which is important. All like well, the one thing you'll see is a lot of these smaller nations will have someone from Canada, or USA helping run it. But that experience of playing at a high level is helping with the support exactly. And that's because you got to start somewhere. And if you yeah. have a bunch of people who have no experience with hockey trying to grow the program it's tough yeah it's yeah, a very yeah. tough thing because again it's very expensive and how do you how do you pay for it if you don't have a whole lot of support and that's the really tough so thing. you so said that you were following up on a story um, that's going on in Puerto Rico right now um, about their hockey team and how they're actually trying to get back to hockey what, what's going on with that yeah so uh, back in I believe 2005 they had a there was an exhibition game held there between uh, the Rangers and the Florida Panthers, and that was supposed to be a big deal, but the attendance was not what the local government wanted. So they actually stopped having hockey games played in the area. Wow. And, and the only way for anyone to play was they basically had to like break into an arena's basement and kind of <laughs> play there and when no one was watching. That was kind of how they, they, they kind of developed. And they had a sledge hockey program that they were starting to develop after so long. They had a new governor that really cared about hockey there, and things were looking really good for them. And then uh, the hurricane hit there and did a lot of damage, and they are now in the process of rebuilding everything and Fair just enough. to get back to playing hockey and there's a guy there Philip Painter who's basically the man behind everything and he's doing an incredible job about bringing hockey back because yeah. he cares he loves it there's photos of of people wearing Puerto Rican jerseys out by like a boat or on a beach and like yeah, not places you expect hockey in. Yeah. Uh, but they they've said in the past that they want to be involved in the Pan Am ice hockey games uh, a tournament that the Florida Panthers host yeah and that would be a really big deal for them because they have a connection with the Panthers and they have a connection they have connections I believe with USA hockey through sledge hockey so they've got a lot of great connections and there's great people running it and I think that they're Someday they could seriously start competing in tournaments. And what about be, the uh, World Juniors? Would would they? I uh, no, that the, not, not to that point. No, yeah. it's it's basically that's a very tough place to get to. Even like, to just the Division Three tournaments are tough. And uh, like, I love watching the Division Three qualification tournaments that like the South Africa just won last year. And yeah, it's, but it's it's tough because you need to have to play in a tournament like that. You, even the lowest division, you need to have the the money to continue competing first off and you need to have a proper double hf approved rank and you need to have a domestic league that plays all your or the plays throughout the season wow that's a lot of it, it's, it's it's a tough barrier for entry but it's yeah. also so they don't get just countries just kind of like oh yeah we want to start a hockey team and they just disappear because they realize they can't do it Fair enough. in reality how can you get like 
how can you train the programs? And even though that is a tough barrier for entry, it does help out if you have the funding in the long term because it, that it builds the foundation for kids to say, I want to play hockey. Are you going to be covering the World Juniors? Uh, not in person this year. I've been in the last couple of years, but okay. I will go into the next couple for sure. The ones in the Czech Republic and Edmonton, things like cool. that. But uh, I will be watching every game. I got a World Junior guide that I put out last year, um, and it was 66 pages. This year, we're looking at 120. Wow. Uh, so it's a pretty – it's it's taken up most of my time since pretty <laughs> much uh, October. Yeah. Uh, so it's been uh, – I'm very excited for it. You're, you're, uh, you're a lot into – player development obviously with with your focus on world juniors and and just triple a hockey um but is that a big part of the game when you focus on that type of tournament yeah like that's is is that the main part like yeah like there's there's obviously there will be all the nhl fans that are are watching it to see how their prospects are doing and other people more casual fans just want to see their country win yeah Uh, for me it's a lot of like these are the guys that are going to not only play in the nhl someday but a lot of them won't make the nhl and a lot of them will be mainstays for the national teams and things like that and you know obviously in canada the world juniors is a very important tournament and for a lot of those guys that is actually the biggest level they'll ever get to but like for a team like Kazakhstan playing in the World Juniors again, like this is the first time in a very like about a decade since they've played in the top group. So this is important because that's insane to me, by the way. Yeah. The fact that Kazakhstan has a team, anyways. Yeah, Kazakhstan, like, they've they they at one point were a much more powerful team. Really, and uh, you know they, I think they had a big loss when. Um, on, uh, when um, Evgeny Nabokov, who used to be San Jose Sharks star goalie, he he played for Kazakhstan at the junior level, but then okay. decided to play for the uh, play for Russia going forward. And I think that was a loss for them because they could have stayed up in the top division, and they are kind of stuck right now in a in the men's team where they're kind of bouncing between the top division and the the Division One A. And part of it is they have a couple Canadians and Americans basically leading the way, but in terms of guys actually train like born and trained there, it's still a pretty weak program. So for them to make the juniors this year is a huge deal. Yeah. And like the, the young kids, again, it was 10 years ago. So anyone under than that have not seen that team play in the top division. So all the young kids now are going to see it for the first time. That's huge for development down the line. Would you say that you've found your niche when it comes to player development, uh, watching younger guys come up and, and see what they could do? Yeah, like like for the like I, I love watching minor midget hockey. Like you know Don Cherry's always at the games too. Like it's, yeah. it's a great level of hockey, and it, you kind of see the players first, and you kind of see them and see them develop, and it makes it fun. Like a guy like Ryan Merkley, for example, he's one of my favorite prospects. I thought he was the best minor midget player I've ever seen, and he's again one of the best offensive defensemen now in the OHL. But there, he's gotten a lot of criticism over the last few years because he's been a guy like, oh, you know, some people say his attitude's not great. He can get lazy at times in his own net. But I've seen him develop from uh, the yeah. age of 14 to now. Wow. And, it, like, that's a fun thing to see, too. To I, see the rise of a, yeah, a player, right? Or, or, or even the fall of some players. True. And you'll see some guys that you maybe never even noticed, and all of a sudden, two years later, they're a potential NHL star. And it's, like, things like that that are really cool. Like, I have one guy right now, and I've been watching minor midget, Shane Wright. He could be one of the best prospects in the last 20 years wow. and he's he's a basically a 2004 born kid that is dominating 2003 born kids and like at that wow. level of that age that's a big deal yeah because yeah. like they haven't hit the, AH, the ohl yet where they're playing against older competition every night they, they've never played against older competition yeah. and all of a sudden he is and he's dominating that's a lot of fun to see guys like that and it's kind of like it's it's the most pure level of hockey you don't have guys out there that just pay their way to be on the team you don't have guys out there just pay, like just there to hit. Yeah. You have three line, three forward lines, all of skilled players, all who are trying to make it to the next level, and that's what makes that really fun. You brought it up with one of the players that you mentioned that their attitude wasn't too good. What is it that there's there, a lot of times there's this stigma about hockey players and that they don't have a personality or they you know it's it's kind of just a very bland you know you see post game conferences mm-hmm. and and they just give very straight answers. Do you think that's evolving? Do you think that's changing? Or do you think it's going to pretty much stay the same? That's kind of why I like junior hockey players. Okay. Because a lot of them aren't... Um, they still have that they, attitude to them? They, they, no, but they, they love the game of hockey. And okay. they, they're happy to be there. And for a lot of them, like that's they, they won't make it past junior hockey. Yeah. So they're living in the moment. And like you'll have kids who are stars. And I think those are the ones who always are more the, the quiet ones. But one guy that I really like, uh, like I love, love talking to, is Carter Hart, who's... Um, going to be playing with the Philadelphia Flyers for I think for a very long time assuming they don't run him out of Philly which is what they typically do with their goalies <laughs> but um, they I got to interview him before the, the 
the World Juniors last year, and it was on the day where they were going to be making the cuts for the team. And even though he seemed like a very safe competitor to make the team, they there was still like, you know, what if he doesn't make the team? They got yeah. some other good goalies. And he was about as loose and as fun as it gets. I, I t did an interview with him for five minutes, and I think we talked for 15 minutes afterwards about literally like where to go get dinner in Buffalo and where, yeah. like, like goalie pads. And he was talking about how much he used to love going to World Junior games as a kid and playing NHL games. And he was so open about it. But like, I, I've interviewed guys like, Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby, who get, yeah. they they are they got a lot of sponsorships, a lot straight of things down. on the line, yeah. so they're straight to the point. Yeah, and I, yeah, that kind of kills the fun. But then you see like Ryan Reeves of the Vegas Golden Knights having fun with the CBC broadcast last year, like or PK Subban, like one of the most fun guys to watch True. in the world, yeah. not just on the ice but off the ice. Yeah, those guys have great personalities, but you know there will be a lot of fans who don't like that, yeah. which I think yeah. is just like you got to embrace it. That's why. Is like, that a bit of an old-fashioned look, though? It kind of, yeah. Like, yeah. like one thing also, like, well, like the Russian hockey players is we've always seen them when they score a goal, the World Juniors just go nuts, yeah, and they will yeah. rub it in the face of their opponents. And you know, I, a lot of people don't like that because that is kind of showboating. It's not always great sportsmanship, but I love it because it just shows they care yeah. and they love it, and they, it's it's still a competitive hockey thing. And they can be friendly to each other off the ice, but on the ice, I want them to have fun. And off the ice, in an interview, I like them to have fun too. So it's. Like, that's why under 17 world championships, every single goal, you were seeing guys do like the greatest celebrations of all time. You would have thought every single goal was the championship <laughs> winning goal. That's what I love about it. Those guys show personality. And yeah, in the NHL, you could definitely say the guys don't because they're kind of told not to. They have a lot more to lose. It, like, like you can lose sponsorship deals. You yeah. can lose things like that. It, it matters because all the eyes are on you. And Fair it's, enough. It's just how it is. Fair enough. Um, how, if, I mean, you kind of went into it, but how do you want to influence your profession, hockey, and just the sport in general? I want people to know that there's more than just the NHL out there because there are a lot of fans who I think are missing some fantastic hockey. There's a Russian hockey league too, right? Yeah, the very competitive Russian yeah. hockey league and that they've now grown to multiple countries. Uzbekistan wants to even be a part of it, a lot of places. Um, so you know, like, there's a lot of great hockey. You just got to open your mind to it. And like, like I'm a big racing fan, and I I grew up only ever watching NASCAR. And now in the last few years, NASCAR is not even my favorite level of racing. Sure. I love these like obscure 24-hour endurance races. In hockey, there's a lot of great stuff. Like you could watch. I recently watched a Latvian under 14 hockey game, and there were a couple of guys who could be potential NHL prospects in a few years. Yeah. And like, you don't have to necessarily go into it with a scouting eye of saying, "I want to see this guy develop. I want to watch how that goes." You can go because it's actually just a lot of fun just to watch different levels of hockey. And you know, the Olympics. I would have argued that the 2018 men's hockey Olympics was the best Olympic hockey I've ever seen. Wow. And it was the one of the like basically since I've been alive, the worst player pool to choose from and it was because not only did those guys care because that was like like a lot of those guys were tired after that tournament like that was their last thing of like being able to play hockey at high yeah. level but because it got to showcase what germany making it to the finals one goal away of beating a dominant russian team um seeing them to play well seeing switzerland play well seeing slovenia play well even south korea scoring a few goals yeah. and we got to see what it looks like for that type of hockey and uh, i just want people to know that there's there's definitely a lot of great hockey if you just open your mind to it yeah. and it's like you, you don't necessarily have to go to the extreme of watching saudi arabia play hockey yeah. you don't need to sit at one o'clock in the morning watching the asian league on a cell phone stream <laughs> but you could watch you could watch different levels of hockey and really enjoy. And I'd say definitely go support your junior hockey team yeah. because that's a thing. Like, I, I think that's very important, and that's what continues to get people wanting to play hockey. Saying like, oh, like here's a kid who's 10 years old wanting to play rep hockey. Well, I see a junior A team I want to play for a few yeah. years, and they make that a goal. So things like that, like knowing that there's so much things you could do, and I try to expose that as much as I can. Don't be surprised by his knowledge. He's only 22. 22, right? Yeah. 22 years old. What's what's the end goal when it comes to? You know what? I'd love to be involved with the WHF some way. Yeah. Like I want to, I, I want to put more exposures on this these small countries. I think you know some good exposure to a, a program like Kenya, like that we saw. We've seen that they sold out their jerseys that they were trying to sell in like half an hour. Wow. Yeah. In, in Eastern time, it was like one o'clock in the morning when they did that too. Who would have thought that Kenya would have a hockey team? And let their alone jerseys would sell. sell out their jerseys. Like yeah. that's a very cool thing. And Interesting thing. The same thing happened with their soccer team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like that's a pretty cool thing. And um, I, I would love to be able to put more exposure on these on these teams and whether it be like tv like 
uh, to be honest, TV networks aren't going to care about these obscure things. But yeah. uh, I think that I would love to have, I would love to be, I'd love to make an impact at some level of helping these countries grow. And I've had some teams come up and say, like, you know, thank you for your coverage. Like, this is great. Now other places are trying to cover us. And um, it's kind of just like a little trickle down effect. And we've seen places like the BBC and ESPN and the New York Post and stuff like that that will end up eventually uh, writing about some of these more, th these obscure teams and getting some more exposure. And yeah. I just kind of want to help start that. That's what I want to do. I want to get more people talking about it. So, so to kind of add on to that, where do you think that the sport will be internationally, at least, in the next 10 years? That is very tough to say because even if we, if you look at the World Junior, like, scores from even, like, 2011, there were a ton of blowouts. Yeah. We don't see that anymore. Like, a blowout now sometimes are just 4-1, where, like, Finland uh, beat Denmark 4-1 at the World Juniors and had 60 shots. Well, 10 years ago, Denmark would have not a chance. They, yeah. would have, they would have been totally out of that one. But then we've also seen Denmark beat Finland in the past. So it's becoming more competitive? It's becoming a much more competitive thing, for sure. And we're seeing a lot more, like 2020, for example, it's going to be a great NHL draft for Europeans. There's going to be a lot of guys who you, like some great guys from Switzerland, a couple guys even from Kazakhstan, a couple guys from Latvia, Austria, that are going to become full-time impact NHLers. Mm -hmm. and there's more countries represented in the NHL now than any previous year. And that's a pretty big thing. We've seen the fall of some programs, like the Czech Republic and Slovakia have kind of really struggled in the last decade. But we're seeing a lot more competitive hockey and a lot more nations getting involved. And even like a Division 1A World Junior Tournament, which typically is dominated by the older players in the tournament, we're seeing that, you know, more like four or five, or I think four teams this year had a realistic chance of actually moving on to the top group. Wow. That would have never been the case a decade ago. Cool. I have one last question, and it kind of has to do with influence. Um, I, I wish we could get more into the NASCAR side of things, but I mean... It is my favorite sport, yeah. but it's, uh, again, very obscure in yeah. some cases. It is, <laughs> in Canada, there is a series, but it's yeah. not as popular as it is in the States. Fair enough. Okay, so I have, I have this quote. Um, tell me what you think about it, just generally. Um, influence is having people follow you because of what you represent. I do agree with that, because that's, like... <sighs> If you have a lot of people doing the same thing, that someone had to have done it first. And like everyone wants to be Bob McKenzie in the hockey industry, like that's a big deal, or Elliot Friedman, and like those guys are very influential because they are like at the top of their game, they're at the top of the level, and yeah. that's what everyone kind of wants to do. They're not really aware of their influence either. They just I, kind of. I I, I I could say they both are, okay. uh, but like they're also like very down to earth guys. Yeah. I, the first time I met Elliot Friedman was in a bathroom and. <laughs> chatted about toilet paper as strange as that may sound that was a thing that happened but like they're very down-to-earth guys but I think they also to a point they have to know like what they've done and that they when you have university students applying to schools or college students applying to schools and like citing them as the influence of why they wanted to get into sports media for yeah. example that's a very important thing and why well, I, I don't expect people to all of a sudden become in love with international hockey or junior hockey just because I'm covering it or exposing it. I just, I want people to know that it exists and that, you know, if there's cool stories to it. And for me, I've always wanted to be the guy that's kind of like, if there is a cool international story, I want to tell it. Sure. And I want to be the one that, again, gets people talking about it. And um, it's... Yeah, I think I do we definitely agree with the quote, though. Cool. Do you like to travel, by the way? I mean... <laughs> it's funny you say that. I've only really covered games. Uh, I covered games in Buffalo. That was the yeah. first time I actually covered a hockey game outside of Ontario. Okay. And uh, you know what? If, if I want to travel, it's to where there's a hockey tournament. Okay, fair enough. Like, I want to go to Switzerland big time to see the Spangler Cup in Davos. It's a beautiful yeah. city. I want to see the Czech Republic next year in Prague for the World Junior. So uh, yeah. I, I don't actively look at traveling, but yeah. like I want to be where the action you'll, is. You'll travel wherever hockey goes. Exactly. Cool. There's hockey everywhere. Steven Ellis, thank you, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. All right. Have a nice one. Mm -hmm.